Welcome to SFG Top Performance. Today we have our regulars here, Jason and Derek, and Jason is going to start us off about spring inputs. Yeah, we'll start off with, with chemicals. You know, it's that time of year where we're at our cheapest price we're going to be for the year. And I guess the only thing that I'm, I won't delve into it too far, but the only thing I'm really going to say is look for the two pass programs. That's what worked last year. If it wasn't that, we had some escapes, we had some problems. So multiple modes of action and a good pre followed by a good post with some residual and I think we'll be in good shape. So that's what, I, that's what I'm going to say as far as chemicals is make sure you're after the multiple modes of action and two passes. Mm -hmm. And then fertilizer. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of different things. Derek, you're really good at writing me scripts for this and that and the other, I'll call you. You know, there's a lot of things that we could do with fertilizer now that we couldn't do, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Machines are accurate and spreading it. You know, they're not, we don't have some, we talked about this morning, some of this equipment we used to use. It was a laptop computer bouncing around in the cab that <laughs> didn't really work, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Now we have this really good equipment to use. We have to, you know, we're finding better ways to apply it, you know, with our using yields and putting fertilizer where it needs to be. So on the VRT fertilizer side, essentially what we're doing is we're trying to put fertilizer um, in the good areas of the fields and put less fertilizer in the bad area of the fields. You've heard us talk about this a hand, handful of times and we're getting, it's getting more and more popular. I just built some more, like you said, for a new guy, new guy um, last week that, you know, it's just everyone's talking about it more. It's become more popular. It just, it kind of just makes money sense. What we're doing is save, saving money in the tough areas and hope, hopefully able to make more money in the in the good areas and that kind of leads into um, some some numbers I put together on a trial that we did um, this this year on a population trial I got with the snow on the ground got some more office time and we had a really good population trial on the seed running variable rate and um, doing what was called learning blocks and figuring out you know what is the most profitable what's the most profitable um, you know seeding rate for corn so what we did um, ran one of down at our Centerville location we went from 30,000 up to 36,000 in a good in a good field and put strips in the field on a pretty pretty flat pretty flat area not a lot of variability um, and ran two two sets of that and we got some really good got some really good data it wasn't like uh, oh the way you know people aren't necessarily getting getting rich off the higher higher amount but it was it tell, told a really good story that you know we're moving um, when you go from 30,000 to 36,000 in some of the trials we were you know adding 10 bushel 10 bushel to it and it was it was real numbers and it was a really good trial that came came across and told the story really good and kind of what the summary what the summary is we ran thirty to thirty six thousand um, like I said the thirty thousand versus thirty six thousand it was thirteen bushel difference is what it was and we if we use today's prices in high priced corn four dollar bushel corn and then three hundred dollars a bag that ends up um, being about thirty dollars an acre better to plant at thirty six thousand now I don't want to go right out there and say you know, everybody should be planting 36,000 because then we'll get into our issues of getting to the bad areas. Things start to fall over. Those stocks get um, small, that sort of thing. But in these good areas of the field that are pumping out 250 plus corn, there's really, um, it's not, there's no reason not to, but you really can push higher yield there. Whereas if you're just putting 32,000 in those 32,000 is a little bit higher than 30,000, but they're still six, seven, eight bushel on the table. And all you have to do is just add in, um, add in a little more seed there. It's uh, easier for the ones that have the variable rate capability and that sort of thing. It's a more of a pain if you have to go change the planter every um, good area of the field. You know, that's not practical, can't do that. But for anybody that's running equipment that can variable rate, it's very, it's very easy to do. We uh, make these, make these maps based on yield and, uh, or we just use satellite, satellite imagery and, off-plant biomass. That's our most popular way that we do it because not everybody um, has yield mapping that we have the technology that can show areas of the field that were better and we ground truth them with the farmers out there to see what what is the best what is the best way to do it. But that's one trial that um, I really like the data that came from it that yeah it showed it showed you know plant more seed uh, plant more seed is more profitable, and that sounds really good coming from people who sell seed. But it, the the number the numbers are real, and there is some money left on the table if you're still uh, planting those good areas at that thirty to thirty two thirty two thousand. When we we're in the middle, thirty two to thirty four, it was about the same. There wasn't too much too much difference there on that good good area. So it's really um, it was really bumping up to that higher population in that good area of the field. Um, and that's why that's why we always push variable rate because we'll get into these areas next to trees that need to be down at thirty thousand. It's only doing one hundred and 
you know, 50, 160 bushel of corn, there's no reason to have that extra expense, that sort of thing. And just on a side note, the difference in price from 36,000 to 30,000 is about $22, $22 an acre. So it sounds like a lot, but if you're gaining, you know, 10 plus more bushel, it makes up for it, makes up for it really fast. Mm -hmm. But Charles Howe has, I guess the application world has kind of stopped for right now, but how did we fare over the last few months, you could yep. say? Well, I was saying, we've, like I said, we've come to a complete stop <laughs> due to the weather and uh, mud underneath now and snow, and it's going to be, it's going to be a day or two before we're back in there. But no, we had a really good fall uh, slash early winter. Uh, probably got 25% more on this last fall than we did the previous fall. We thought the previous fall was a really good fall and just keep having good weather to get everything done. If you didn't get it on or get, get your crop in or get what you wanted to get done in the field this fall, you, you really didn't want to. Uh, so now, now we're playing catch up, getting sheds refilled back up and, uh, getting inventories of chemicals in and just trying to get ready for spring. It'll be here i say less than three months from now, we'll, we'll be planting corn. It's, it sounds like it's a long way. It looks like it's a long ways away when you look outside today, but it's going to be here before we know it. Another thing we're doing is making sure these bins are in good shape. After that snow we got in, a lot of good east wind there, blew a lot of snow in some of these bins. So a lot of guys are out trying to get bins in shape. And first of all, you got to dig it out to get to the darn things. But anyway, just trying to make sure, keep an eye on things out there. And it'll, it, it'll, be, it'll be spring before we know it, so... Well, I want to thank you for joining us this time. We'll see you again. <laughs>